there there's so many moving parts and pieces to the story yeah. that it's like my yeah. head just it starts to explode we started dating you know we just met became friends started spending time together had a great time together started dating um, you know, he did a lot of the love bombing from him was very, um, it was, uh, flattery. He used flattery and, okay. you know, I was, I was craving that at the time. And so I needed that and that worked on me. Um, he didn't do the love bombing in the sense of like coming around all the time or, um, sending flowers or any of those kinds of things. Those things would not have worked on me. I would have just been annoyed and okay. been like, go away. But the flattery, you know, yeah. that worked. So that was that the method that he used. He's incredibly intelligent and that makes it even worse because he's very, very um, perceptive around people. Um, and he, mm -hmm. he picks up on, you know, your weaknesses. He, he picks up on all of it very quickly. Um, right. And so, you know, there were some definite red flags at the beginning and uh, and I broke up with him six months into the relationship because I, I just wow. saw a side of him that I didn't mm -hmm. like and that was not going to work for me. Um, but the right. interesting thing about that was that when I when I broke up with him, um, he got this like puppy dog look on his face. And that was what stuck with me for the next few weeks. Like while we were not together, it was like that look mm -hmm. that he got on his face when I said, I, I don't want to do this. Um, right. And so I think I took him back out of pity. But it's it's an interesting dynamic because somehow he got me to ask to be in the relationship again, but it was I still did it out of pity for him. So it's a it's a weird craziness, like you said. Yeah, it it was like a haunting stuck with me. Like oh, it just, okay, that's I still why. Still in my head. I still really spent yeah. a couple of years um, really focused on me and really focused on um, you know just doing what I needed to do to take care of myself. So um, right. so that was that was what it was, and I kind of even gave up family relationships a little bit to a point. Like I just backed off from my family and right. went to him instead. But it's, wow. it's interesting because none of it was conscious. It, you know, it wasn't conscious decisions, but uh, but looking back, like that's what happened. Was it kind of gradual then, do you think? Um, I don't know if it was gradual or if it was like that, that when the decision came to get back into the relationship, if it was like that all just fell off. I couldn't, I couldn't answer okay. that. Right. But the focus on you that you had been accustomed to doing definitely shifted and it wasn't, you, your energies weren't going there anymore. Uh, yeah. What started, what else started to take place after that? Um, at that point in time, he, let's see. So that was about six months into the relationship. And then about six months later was when we decided to have a child together. And that was when the big, wow. that was when the NARC came out. Um, it was uh, as soon as I was pregnant, it, there was a switch in his eyes. Like I, it's, it haunts wow. me. I saw it in his eyes. I actually saw it happen. Um, and I, I just became his property. I was no longer my own autonomous individual. I was his property. And to this day, he sees me as his property. I, he owns me in his mind. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. And we've been separated for a year and a half now. Um, and yeah, I don't think that'll ever go away. I don't, I don't know. But he, you know, some of the stuff that he did in the relationship um, was he actually started recording me because he's an attorney, like we said. Um, and so he recorded me all day. His testimony, I tried to get a protective order at one point. His testimony during the protective order hearing was that he had recorded me all day, every day from August until March. So that's a seven month period. Uh, which is like like the level of psychosis that somebody would have to have to be able to do that, knowing that they were building a case against you, knowing that they were going to use this against you as emotional blackmail in the courtroom when needed, you know, in whatever capacity it was needed, he knew he was going to be using it against me. Um, and so, so uh, the but the level of psychosis there, like that's you know almost sociopathic behavior um, that goes, I think, beyond just straight narcissism, but. I'm not a mental health professional, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you just you just know what you don't want in your life. You said the narc came out. What do you mean by that? And maybe that can be helpful to others when they are experiencing this. What should they be looking for? Um, 
Hmm, how do I articulate this? He he just changed. He all of a sudden um, it was it was much more about him. It was much more like we lived in his world, and I would tell him that a lot. Like I feel like we live in your world. Like what what happened to my world? You know where where right, am I? Right, right. We, go, we go to your families for every holiday. We go to um, you know his sporting events. We we go to everything. It was just all about him, and I just I was like, right. where where do I exist in this relationship? And we would argue about that a lot. Um, another thing was, you know, he had a, a habit of staying out till two in the morning drinking. And so, you know, and that's, oh, family course is right there. I, we had, three babies. <laughs> I just had a twin. So we had three babies in less than two years and he would stay out, you know, at least three, if not four or five nights a week until two in the morning drinking. And the judge was like, what? On the nights you were home, you put the babies to bed. You're such a great father. I kind of put you in a box. Yeah, he did it very, very gradually, very, very subtly. And he, you know, he knew my weaknesses. He knew exactly what to say. He knew exactly where to poke and prod. He knew exactly where I needed some healing. So um, so he would try to give me, you know, artificially gave me that healing, like really relationships with my father and with my mom even, um, and just kind of those things. And he, he tried to really fill some voids with me and he tried very, very hard and looking back, you know, I, I see how he was doing that and how that's that's a red flag in itself because, you know, why yeah. was I not in yes. therapy? Why? And that's, yeah. you know, I take responsibility for not going to therapy. But still, like, that's not his job. His job is not to heal me. I have issues with men in general, trust issues, because, you know, my father was not there when I was growing up. And, you know, yeah. he and I have healed our relationship now. We're actually really good now. Yeah. But, um, but you know, at the time, I was still like, kind of processing a lot of that stuff. And, Right. Um, and my mom, you know, was not things were I didn't have an ideal childhood. Let's just say that. Right. Um, right. And so, and you know, I would tell him some of those deep secrets and things and he would exploit right. every single one. And right. then in the court system, he totally exploited it. Kids, yeah. My older kids weren't affected until after the separation when the stalking started, because, you know, they saw they saw me and my fear and, you know, what I was going through. OK, um, right. I would say that was the biggest way that they were affected. And then also abandonment from him because he just left he just he didn't say goodbye to my older kids he just was what? gone and he and he blames me for that and his story is that i came between their relationship which is he just simply didn't ask to see them he never made any efforts or attempts effort to them whatsoever yeah. so yeah. but you know of course it's my fault it's all yes he does he won full custody uh and part of why he won, he wouldn't have won full custody, but I didn't participate in the court proceedings. Yeah. And the reason that I didn't participate was because it was a witch hunt. It was not a family. Yeah. What's in the best interest of the kids? I even pointed that out to the courts where I was like, look, look through every motion that they filed. They've cited the best interest of the child statute once. They once. used the wow. phrase best interest of the children. I think it was twice. Like, and I pointed that out to the courts. They didn't. None of it mattered. None of it mattered. It was a witch hunt. So I was just like, you know what? I'm not even participating. And and the thing is, is that he uses the kids to continue abusing me. And so stepping away, knowing that I the best I could hope for was 50 50 custody. Um, and I probably would have gotten it, you know, if I had stayed. Although if I had stayed, I don't think I would be alive right now. So there's this. and then um, so he he won full custody of our girls. And then my older kids, he went to their father collaborated with their father so that he oh. would win full custody of my older kids. For them, I did. they didn't even hold a hearing. They, I literally didn't even have a hearing. And the judge said, you get full custody.